What's up guys, this is Chris with C&T Automotive. Today we're working on a 2003 Mazda 6. We've got some rust that we're going to be repairing. Let me see here. Looks like somebody might have already tried to repair. It looks like some Bondo or something here got put on. I'm not really sure what that is. But we're going to get all that off of there. And we're going to go ahead and fill it back in the bit better way than it is now so what we're gonna do first we, we need to get all of this off the oil um, whatever they put up there see all that's just bondo whatever the other people have put on before we got the car so we're, we're gonna do is get all of that off and as soon as we clean all of that off we will be right back um, what we're gonna use to get that off we're gonna use a couple of different things um, we're gonna use some sand, uh, some sandpaper, sanders. Um, we've got a, a, a few other things like, uh, like maybe like a five-in-one, something like this to kind of just get, kind of just get in there and and get it all, all this like this here chipped off like it should be. Just kind of scrape it all up, you know, uh, a little hard to get it all with being on the phone, but just kind of get in there like that just to get it kind of chipped up so we can get down to the bare metal which is what's good um, other than that we're going to use a sander and we're going to use a uh, and we're going to also use a wire brush this is good for kind of getting up in there and kind of cleaning it off like this once we once we get down to the bare metal um, well to the bare sheet metal like this where we need to be um, so I'm going to get this cleaned up and I will be right back. Alright guys, so we got it sanded down the best we could. Got it pretty much down to the bare there. There is some Bondo that was already done here, so I just kind of sanded that up a little bit. I don't want to go too far because it looks like it's rusted underneath it. It looks like maybe the previous owner or something or whoever worked on it last might have done a little bit of uh, Bondo repair to it already and maybe they just didn't do it properly or just didn't do uh, do the enough of it like didn't do the full spots of it or whatever the case is but anyways guys um, so I got it I got it done there and sand it now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wipe it down with some alcohol just to kinda get get everything off make sure I got all the uh, uh, dust from the from sanding it and all that good stuff um, so I'm gonna kinda just wipe it down real good so I can make sure it's a nice clean surface give it a good surface to adhere to and all I'm using here guys is just some some regular old rubbing alcohol nothing nothing special just some regular rubbing alcohol just something just to clean it up a little bit make sure I get all this real clean so when I put the Bondo on it it actually has something to stick to and that way it's not just going on to some dirt which obviously as everybody I'm sure will be able to figure out by themselves if it goes on to some dirt it obviously isn't going to be able to get a good bond Obviously, it's not gonna get a good surface there. So, what I'm doing here is kind of wiping it down, making sure I got everything off all the cracks and crevices. And And you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this part guys just make sure you got it pretty clean all right that should 
should be good there. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm gonna use the Bondo body patches, uh, just the self-adhesive Bondo patch. And I'm gonna place that in the hole and clear me a spot here. These rocks are killing my knee. So I'm gonna place this in here, kind of like something like that there, just so it covers up the hole. Um, these are supposed to be self-adhesive. I usually like to give it a little bit of help with maybe a hot glue gun or something simple. Um, you know, just something to make it stick a tad bit better. I'm going to fold it like this to get it to go in. And you want to make sure that you get it underneath the, uh, you know, back behind the old stuff there. You want it to be able to cover up that hole. So what we're going to do, we're going to bend it in a little bit like this. If I can get it to kind of come in. And that's not working like I wanted it to. So I need to go back this way with it. There we go. That's like a little bit too right there. like that there so what I'm gonna do guys I'm going to go ahead and, and push that down in the bottom like that and I'm gonna make this a little bit straighter here so we get a better a better seal on it here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on it just so I can get it to where I need it to be. I like to use these just to kind of put it into place, but for some reason it doesn't want to work like that for me. Alright, so once we got it in place where we need it to be at, we're going to go ahead and put a small little bead of hot glue on it just to make it stay in place where I need it at. It's going to be just like that there. I'm going to get this set in there, guys. I'm going to let that dry for a second, and I will be right back. All right, guys. So once we get everything sanded, the plate put up there, well, the patch put up there, then we want to uh, wipe it down with alcohol. Once we get all of that done, the next and final step is going to be getting the bondo ready so to do that what you want to do you want to get a little bit of bondo poured out here and I'm gonna do it like this just in case I don't need all of it Maybe. kind of do it on an as needed basis type of thing so basically guys a good rule of thumb for the hardener is if you put it about a half an inch thick up there then uh, it looks like the hardener then got stuck up there if you put it about a half an inch thick no matter how long you make it or width wise or any of that as long as you go about a half an inch thick then run one line of of hardener right across it 
if you go from side to side, it's usually a good rule of thumb. It's about like that. Usually a good rule of thumb to be able to see how much hardener you need. Add a little thin line there, so add a little bit extra. That's a good rule of thumb usually to be able to mix it up. Now, when you're mixing it, you want to be able to pick it up and set it down. You don't want to you don't want to let air bubbles into it, so you want to kind of smush it around like this here. And, and keep flattening it. That's not a very good surface, so I'm going to do it over here really quick. Alright guys, so once you get it done, you want it to kind of look like that there. Now once you do it, you got usually right about 10, maybe 15 minutes to work. Um, once you mix it up. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start with the smaller one. Just so I can make sure that I can get some good bit up here. Not too sure that I mixed up enough of it. 
looks like we're going to be needing to make some more. Probably a lot more. Definitely underestimated it a tiny bit. Just kind of spread it out, you know, get it going across there. It looks like I didn't mix nearly enough for this, so I'm gonna have to mix up some more. Clearly, um, so I'll go get some more mixed up, and you get the gist, guys. Basically, just going across here with it like this, get it put up there. You wanna make sure you get a good hold on it so you want to make sure you get a decent amount put up there you don't want to slack off on it which is why I'm going to actually go mix up some more because I didn't put nearly enough up here so I'm going to get some more mixed up